Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I thought the time is right to list five things I loved and hated about Halloween Ends. Now I've tried to review this movie several times. I've tried writing it out and it just doesn't work. And the only way I can express my feelings about this movie is if I list five things I love about it and five things I hate about it. Let's get started. So these are in no particular order whatsoever. So the first thing that I'm going to mention are the things that I loved about Halloween Ends. So the first thing I'm going to mention is the title sequence. It is definitely up there with being one of the best title sequences in this new trilogy. I loved how the font is no longer an orange font like we would typically see in a Halloween movie. Instead, it is blue like it was in Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. And the way that the pumpkins change within one another, you have a normal pumpkin and then as the camera zooms in, there is another pumpkin within another pumpkin. And it just sort of outgrows itself and then you have like another pumpkin. You know, it's totally different and I totally love that. It's really different. And that's the only way I can describe Halloween ends. Different. So I thought that the opening title sequence was amazing. The second thing that I loved was the score. I knew that the score in Halloween Ends was going to be amazing because Halloween 2018 score, amazing. Halloween Kills, amazing score. So there's no doubt that this score for Halloween Ends was going to be great. I already own Halloween Kills on vinyl and Halloween 2018 on vinyl and I cannot wait to grab... Um, a copy of the Halloween end score on vinyl. I think that John Carpenter and the rest of the crew who scored this film did an amazing bang up job. I think that I think maybe the 2018 score is still my favorite out of this trilogy, but that being said, the score for Halloween ends did not disappoint whatsoever. It definitely has uh, a lot of great elements in there for a Halloween movie and it's just, it, you know, it's just overall a great score. Okay, so the third thing that I loved about Halloween Ends was James Duke Courtney as Michael Myers. The moment that I saw James as Michael Myers in Halloween 2018, I knew from that point forward he was my all-time favourite Michael Myers actor. What works as well is that much like Dick Warlock, who previously was my favourite Michael Myers, James Duke Courtney is a stuntman. So that also, the body language is, is also there as well. James just embodies Nick Castle so much that sometimes it's uncanny. He's got the walk, he's got, he's got everything. James is so close to Nick Castle. And speaking of Nick Castle, I will mention this because it is a spoiler review. It was so good to see Nick Castle on screen for the first time without the mask. Um, it was one of those moments where I actually went, oh my God, you know, so it was it was great. And even though it was a brief cameo, it was, it was great to see him in this movie. I also love the fact that Nick Castle is a big part of this trilogy. You know, even though he's only doing little things here and there in this trilogy, he's always the breathing behind Michael in this this sort of trilogy and that is so good and it's so sort of nice that they sort of reflect on Nick and they always bring Nick back because they know the crew know that he's important to this character unlike Tony Moran but anyway I digress Michael's first kill in the movie is definitely one of the highlights in this film when Corey goes into the sewer and the cop follows him and Michael is just waiting like this all frail and decrepit and just he's up a corner it's just there was something so haunting about that sequence uh just that image Michael is just there there was just something so haunting about it and to the point where I said to my friend oh my god shit's about to go down and it did Michael took his knife and then the theme kicked in, the Halloween theme, this revamped theme sort of kicked in and he just took one stab into the cop's stomach whilst Corey was holding him down and Michael definitely felt that adrenaline kick in. There was a moment he pulled the knife out, he just stood there for a little while and then he felt it kick in and then he just kept stabbing and stabbing and stabbing. It was fantastic, one of my all time favourite sequences in the film. And I don't know if I'm going to get any shit for this, but yeah, 
throw it at me, I don't care. It's, you know, you're all entitled to your opinion. But when we first see Michael in this sequence, he's fragile. And rightly so, you know, he's been through so much shit in this trilogy, you know, he's took so much damage that I thought it was great to actually, for once, see Michael, other than the original movie, as a human being. In my mind, Michael has always been a human being. He just can't feel emotional or physical pain. So, you know, he's taken so much damage from the, the mob in Halloween Kills. You know, he's taken so much damage from Laurie, being burned alive and everything, having his fingers shot off, shot in the cheek by Karen and everything. And when we first see him in this movie, he's just like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, he's, he's fragile. And I loved it. And this is a massive spoiler, but, you know, this is a spoiler review. The, the the end of Michael Myers in this movie is one of no it's not one of it is the greatest Michael Myers death in the entire Halloween franchise it was just one of those sequences where I literally was like they actually did that when Alison mentioned not dead enough I thought what the hell are they gonna do and it was my friend who actually clocked on that they were going to put him in the grinder because he noticed that the grinder was featured earlier on in the movie. And when Alison said, not dead enough, my friend a few moments later said, they're going to put him in the grinder. And I was like, you are kidding. So I didn't clock on to that, but my friend did. Which, of course, leads me on to the special effects by Christopher Nelson, who totally didn't disappoint in this movie. I knew that the deaths in this movie were going to be great. Halloween 2018 had fantastic deaths. Halloween Kills had amazing deaths. And Halloween Ends didn't disappoint. Two standout deaths for me in Halloween Ends are one that I've already mentioned, which is Michael's death, so we'll put that aside. But the DJ, the DJ's death was, even though it wasn't done by Michael, it was still a standout death. When... At this point, Corey has become Michael. I'll get on to that later on. Corey has become Michael, goes into the um, the radio station and just starts fucking banging the radio DJ's head onto the desk, lifts his head up, his jaw is all broken, dislocated, whatever you want to call it. A tooth drops out from my understanding, uh, but he's not done. He's not done, takes a pair of scissors and just cuts his tongue off and it just flops on the record player and just goes around. And even though there was a little bit of humour, because I've got a dark, twisted sense of humour, even though I find that a little bit humorous with the whole tongue on the record player, whatever, um, it was such an amazing death scene. And other than Michael's, if, if we're not going to count Michael's death scene, that was the best death scene in the whole movie. And then finally, the last thing that I loved about Halloween Ends was the acting. I think everyone did a great job. Bear in mind, there are some things that I would have done differently. Um, but everyone did what they were told to do. Um, I have problems with the characters, not the acting. Um, everyone did what they were told to do. I think Laurie was great. Um, it was great to see her sort of... I guess smiling again. Uh, she was more like Laurie from the original movie. Um, you know, she's carving pumpkins and everything, and she's wearing the apron, and she's you know she's putting out decorations and stuff like that. She's moved on. Um, I'll get onto that a little bit later. Uh, Alison's great. Hawkins was fantastic, I thought, and it's just overall everyone just did a bang up job with the acting. So. I can't fault that, really. Well, actually, one thing I must mention is that Andy Matichek has always been um, fantastic throughout this entire trilogy, other than, you know, the uh, recurring characters like Laurie and Michael, of course. Um, Andy Matichek was an amazing newcomer in Halloween 2018, and throughout that point, she was just absolutely fantastic and remains one of my all-time uh, favourite Halloween characters in the entire franchise and I would love her to have her own sort of set of movies um, with like a different kind of Michael Myers if they ever intend to bring back Michael in some shape or form because I know that James Duke Courtney would be interested in reprising his role I'd love to see um, Andy Matichek have her own sort of 
Halloween movie with James reprising as Michael um, in a totally different storyline. No Laurie, no, just Andy and James. So, yeah, those two are definitely standouts for me. Now we're moving on to things that I absolutely hated about Halloween Ends. And, oh God, there is... Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, number one, less Michael in this movie. Obviously, this is the first thing that I have to get off my chest. This movie is the final confrontation between Michael and Laurie. What the fuck happened? I've got absolutely nothing bad to say about James G. Courtney throughout this trilogy. Absolutely nothing, as you already know. But this is the final confrontation between Laurie and Michael, and this is how you sort of want to send it off. Michael's hardly in this movie, but when he is on screen, James G. Courtney as Michael, when he's on screen, he's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But there should have been such a better send-off between these two characters. So the second thing that I hated about this movie was the final confrontation between Michael and Laurie. Jesus, it was so anticlimactic. And it was over just so quickly. The confrontation in 2018 was so much better. Like, if you had the confrontation in... They beat the living shit out of each other in the 2018 movie. And that was so much better than what we got in Halloween Ends. I mean, yeah, fair enough. She... Pinned him to the table and everything. I mean, Michael fucking beat the shit out of her by the end of this movie. And yeah, okay, that was good. But I wanted more. I wanted more of it. I wanted Laurie to come out the other end of it with like a... Yeah, okay, she got a bruise on her neck and a couple couple of cuts here and there on her face. But I wanted her to come out more than that. <sighs> Jesus Christ, this... Oh, God, the confrontation was so bad in this movie. Oh... Shit balls! it was bad. Okay, so moving on from the final confrontation scene between Laurie and Michael. It's just, blah, moving on from that. It's just, <laughs> okay, number three. Why did Corey want to become Michael? It makes no sense. And it was just, oh God, it makes no sense. I mean, to be honest, it's never really explained why Michael killed Judith on Halloween night in 1978. But you know what? It's fine, because it was done. It was the start of a franchise. It was We've already told that story. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole again. It's already been told. It's already been said. The first kill in Halloween Ends was not Corey's fault. And then after that, it was just... Corey seemed to just enjoy the adrenaline that he got from killing people. And just so he decided to go into the sewer, take Michael's mask, and just begin to act out Michael's actions. It just made no sense. And I hate the fact that when... <laughs> I'm getting angry now. I hate the fact that when... Michael grabbed Corey... There was a sense of some sort of passing going through the both of them. As they looked into each other's eyes. And Michael just let him go. That could have been just left alone. I didn't really care for that. I've got nothing against the actor who played Corey in this movie. I... Personally, would have preferred if the Corey character would have had his own movie, but he doesn't belong in a Halloween movie, I don't think. And whilst I'm on the topic of Corey, I've got to mention this because I didn't write it down. The whole relationship between Corey and Alison was just a speed run. It was just rushed. It, ma it <laughs> didn't make any sense. Okay, so the fourth thing that I really hated about this movie, and something that I really wanted to see, and it just didn't happen... I wanted to see the remaining characters from the rest of the trilogy come together and kill Michael. The main characters I'm talking about. I'm talking about Laurie, Alison, uh, Lindsay, Hawkins. I wanted them all to come together and put an end to Michael once and for all. Hell, even the mob in Halloween Kills did a better job. I mean, it, at least they tried. I mean, fair enough, they died by Michael's knife. But at least they fucking tried. I mean, going back to Lindsay... She's absolutely wasted in this movie. Kyle Richards is just... She might as well have just not been in this movie. She's just working behind the bar. But, you know, it all comes down to the climax of this movie. This final film, Halloween Ends, was meant to be about Michael and Laurie. And it was just so disappointing. And finally, the fifth thing that I hated about Halloween Ends was the promo material. If you were going by this movie from the trailers and the posters, surely you would have had a thought of... This is the final confrontation. This is the final battle between good and evil. And yeah, sure, you know, the trailer made it look like that Laurie might die in this movie. But it 
<laughs> this is what I'm saying. The whole thing comes down to the final confrontation. So disappointing, so anticlimactic. The trailers were so different from the film. They gave us a completely different perspective. And you know, in one of the trailers, Laurie actually mentioned that four years ago, Michael Myers killed my daughter. At no point in this movie does she sit down to reflect upon Karen's death. She doesn't look at a photo and just feel upset, cry, or anything like that. Nothing. No, nothing. I mean, fair enough, there's like a little decoration in the kitchen with like Karen's sort of handprints when she was a baby um, that she made for her mother. But that's, that's nothing. That is nothing. I mean, we see, I think, we see a photo of Karen. That's about it. We don't actually see, we don't get a moment where Laurie sits down, looks at a photo of Karen, and just reflects upon what happened. We don't. And I just think it's like four years from your daughter's death, and you're happy go lucky. You are fine. And the same goes for Alison as well. At no point does she sort of reflect on her mother. And it really frustrated me. It was as if within those four years, she was just, she just got over it just like that. And it bugged me. And another thing which I forgot to mention as well, and it really frustrated me. There's a sequence in this movie where, going back to Alison and Corey, there's a sequence in this movie where Corey goes up to Alison. He just randomly says to her, I just killed someone. And Alison is all like, okay. Let me listen to your problems. I'll hear you out. At no point does she sort of think, okay, I'm a bit weary now of this guy. I'm going to sort of keep my distance because what I've been through, you're kind of giving me bad vibes. No, she's with him all the way throughout this entire fucking movie. Until the very end where she's like, you were right about Corey. Hi, yay, yay. But anyway, I got off track a little bit there. Look, the, the, the end of it all is that the trailer was so different compared to what we got in the final film. The trailer was so promising, and yet the film was just... By the end of it, I was just torn with the film itself. And look, this isn't the worst Halloween film out there. There are far worse Halloween films out there. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, uh, Halloween 5. You know, there are worse Halloween films out there. This isn't one of the worst ones. Um, I don't know where to rank it at the moment within the whole franchise. I don't know where to put it. But I think, as a whole, Jamie Lee Curtis was right by saying Halloween Ends is going to make fans angry. So I think to a certain extent, she was right. Whew. Anyway, guys, that was five things I loved and hated about Halloween Ends. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And on that note, I will see you in the next video. And as always... Take care.